Hello everybody and welcome back. This is the continuation of the basics for Python in Blender and today we're going to have a look at loops and a few other introductionary things as well. Now if I go over on the top here to my scripting workspace you will see it's slightly different um, if you've watched previous videos and probably slightly different to yours as well. I have simply moved the info editor so it stretches the bottom of the screen so we can see what's going on there and obviously gives us a bit of space for my head as well so I don't have to edit out my head covering up things. Of course I could have it not here at all but I like being able to chat to you guys. So let's crack on. Let's start by deleting our default cube from the scene so we can go straight in. And I'm gonna add it back in. Hey, resurrecting the default cube. And we've got our code that we need here. There's no shame in going and grabbing that, copying it and popping it straight into a new script. Now you see I pressed the new button there to get going. So if we just hit the cross there, unlink the new button there just in case I did that a bit fast then we've got loads of extra bits here but we don't care about the end to edit mode we only care about its size and its location and of course we have not imported bpy yet so let's make sure we do that so import bpy in my last video I said that you had to still type it down here in the python console on the left hand side that's not true in fact if I had bothered to read here I'd have realized that all of these were automatically accessible. And we can see here, bpy.data, there's even a shortcut there to going d dot. Make sure your cursor's in there, capital D dot, and it will access bpy.data, which is incredibly useful. We're not getting to that just yet, though. So in front of us here, we've got a script that should add a cube to the center of the scene. Let's just delete the cube, run the script, bang it's in there brilliant now the next thing i want to do is just stack these on top of one another and i want to be able to control how high i stack that and in order to do that i'm going to use what are called variables so i can store information in something that's easy to type and in fact there are two other things that i want to make sure that i have set in a variable or actually more than two but basically this location here i don't want to have to keep typing I don't want to have to keep typing out 0, 0, 0 every time or whatever it happens to be. And also the size here. I'd like to control that independently and not having to type magic numbers as they're known deep down within the code. I'd like it to be exposed right at the top. So I'm going to declare a variable. We're going to call it size and we're going to set it to 1. And then down here in the code, what I can do is say size equals size because the variable, we're gonna set the parameter size to whatever size is set at. And that means if we press play now, well, let's delete everything from the scene first of all, and then press play, we get a box that's one in size. If I go for five in size, it's then five in size. We don't have to keep editing the detailed code. So that's one of the main reasons for having variables, avoiding those magic numbers in there. And also just making our code more dynamic so we can change it around. The other thing that I want to do is store this location. Now there are a couple of ways of doing that we can store it in a tuple but that's immutable we cannot change that so if we go ahead and store a set of numbers let's call it location and we go 0 comma 0 comma 0 comma 0 comma this is called a tuple it can be three long it can be five long it can be however many long and it's immutable so if we set it we cannot change it later on without redeclaring it. So we can come underneath in our code and go location equals something else, and that will change what location actually is. So we can go one, 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 and that's a now set location to something different. But we cannot actually change location number one, number two, number three, or in this case, index zero, one, and two to something different. However, we could also store it as a list, which is what happens if we store it in square brackets. Now that has the benefit that we can now change these. So we can set location zero to a different value. However, there's another more easier way of handling this, and that's to set the X, Y, and Z coordinates by declaring them as variables X, Y, and Z. And then all we need to do is say x equals y equals z 
equals, and then we get to pick a number. Now, personally, I would prefer that our, our cube, when we add it to the scene, sits on the XY plane. So we're going to have to move it up by whatever half the size is. So we could say size divided by 2, and let's see what that gives us when we do that. And go ahead and press play. And we can see here that we've added a cube that's size 5, and because we've set all of these equal, basically it sits on the surface and where x and y both are positive. Whether or not that's what you want, you can tweak your values and get what you need. I'm going to leave it there, but I'm going to set my size back down to 1 for the moment so I can see things when they stack on top of one another. Okay, so let's get to the crux as to why you would want to use a loop rather than just typing it manually. Well, if we were going to be incredibly manual, what we could do is Z currently equals a certain value, which is size divided by 2. So we could go Z equals 1.5 and do the same thing again. And that will add in two cubes on top of one another. Now that's incredibly manual. You probably wouldn't want to do that again and again and again. But you could do, we could grab this and just essentially do a manual loop, keep typing it in. And when we go ahead and press play, <laughs> nothing happens because we've set this to an absolute value. We're not incrementing it at all. But this is essentially what we want our code to do. Then when we go ahead and press play, the cubes get stacked on top of one another. This is ridiculous. You wouldn't want to have to keep typing in repeating code over and over again. And it's incredibly error prone. So let's get rid of that nonsense and start looking at ways that we could repeat it. So we could repeat it two ways that's relatively easy here. We could repeat it with a while loop or with a for in range loop. Let me show you both of those. We'll start with the while loop. So we can say while something, which we don't have yet. So let's create this something. What should we call it? Height. Height is probably a good name for this. And we'll set it to 5. So we want it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 blocks high. I'm going to get rid of the cubes that are currently there. So you may go something like while um, height, in this case, because we need to compare it to something, is greater than 0, do the following. And we need a colon at the end of there. And Python uses indentation when it comes to controlling your code. So what we need to do is while the height is greater than zero, we need to add a cube. We then need to increment. So instead of just setting Z to a particular value, we can say Z equals Z plus one. But there's shorthand for that, which is simply plus equals 1. So we're saying z plus equals 1, which will increment z. And we also need to decrement the height. Otherwise, this would be an infinite loop. This is one of the downsides with loop. If I went to press play right now, it would probably crash Blender. I'm almost certain it would. But we're not going to. We're going to go to the height and take one from it. So height minus equals 1. So let's go ahead and press play and see what that looks like. Excellent. So we've gone down this list. We've said whilst height is greater than zero, add a cube, increment the height by one. We could increment it by the size then because one of the problems we've got at the moment is if size was five and then we press play, they're stacked on top of one another. And this is one of these dangers with magic numbers, numbers in your code that don't update when other things in your code change. But if we set that to size, then we know that they will stack on top of one another perfectly every time. The height is simply a counter in this particular case, counting down from five to when it reaches one, and then it goes zero, and then of course it stops going around this whilst loop because the height is no longer greater than zero. Let's select everything there, press play, and we can see they stack perfectly on top of one another. And once again, I'm gonna set the size back down to one and clear everything down and check my code. One of the things you probably do want to do is save and check your code on a regular basis. If you happen to type a lot of code in 
and then you inadvertently create a loop that is an infinite loop and crashes Blender, then you're going to be stuck. You're going to lose whatever you've typed so far, which at this stage is just frustrating. Later on, it can be a real nightmare. You can lose quite a bit of work if you don't get into that habit. Now, the other type of loop is a four in range loop, and that basically removes the need for this height decrement that we've got going on here. So if I go ahead and create a new file, so I'm going to call this one here while, so we've got something to compare it to. I'm going to create a new one and call it four in range. So we've got something that we can flip back uh, backwards and forwards and check on. And then from this drop down here, we can switch between them. I'm going to copy all of this across into the four in range, and then we can see what we're going to change. Now the great thing about this is it's not going to be as error prone. So what we can do here is remove the height increment because it's built into the four in range. We're going to get rid of the while here and say four. Now we need a variable that it's going to iterate around. So we can call it four cube in range and you could have called it anything. And then we need some parentheses and a colon. Now within inside these parentheses, we're going to have to put something that has a range, either a list or in this case, a value. So height has a value of five. So we can say in range height. There are five numbers there, one, two, three, four, five. So all we need to do now is just clear our cubes, press play, and we've got the same output in less lines of code. If we have a look at the while loop, it was 11 lines long, including our white space. And then we've got our four in range, is 10 long. And there we go, we've got ourselves a basic loop over in Blender. This is a fundamental building block of making sure that your code is able to iterate over lists, over the objects in your scene. It's going to be incredibly powerful and something that we're going to use over and over again. So there's going to be plenty of opportunity to reinforce your loop knowledge. Now we will also in a future video coming up, have a look at nesting loops where we put loops inside loops in order to do things. One of the ways that we could use this, for instance, is let's say if we wanted to build a tower that slowed a bit like a Mayan pyramid, uh, we could start with a large base and then get smaller and smaller. Uh, our tower that we've built today is only in one dimension. We would want to also build it out in the X and Y plane as well. And that's when we're going to have to nest loops inside one another to be really efficient with our code. And then you're really starting to delve into algorithmic programming. You're programming your cube, or in this case, Blender, to produce an object. And that's phenomenal. The power that that unleashes is absolutely amazing. Anyway, as I've mentioned before, baby steps will get there eventually. And I hope you found this video uh, both interesting and useful to your development within Blender. If you've liked the video, then please do click the like button. Consider subscribing if you're enjoying the series so far so you know when the next video drops. And I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.